Hello? We're on, George. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to First Look. I got a uh, laptop from 1957 that I've still been using, and I got to get a new one, but uh, great to have everybody here. Uh, Chappie and I are live from Santa Anita. Ryan from Parts Unknown. What's going on, folks? What's up, Ryan? Go ahead. You start. You're on mute, buddy. You're muted. Sorry about that. Yeah, nothing's up. I'm uh, trying to figure out my computer, getting pumped up for uh, Friday Night Racing at Del Mar. So I look forward to this time all year long. So See what I'm doing, Georgie? Yes. I'm warming up the left arm. I'm going to try out for as a reliever for the Cubs. There's nobody left. <laughs> Maybe they can sign me to a contract the rest of the year. Cubs are going to be unrecognizable uh, next year, Chappy. They've traded everybody. They're all gone. Chris Bryant just traded the Giants just now. That's the rest of them. Bryant just traded as well. Baez is gone. Rizzo uh, is gone. Rizzo Kimble to the gone. Mets. Man, I mean, it's uh, the, 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 uh, the Cubs are going to look like a two-year-old uh, field of uh, horses because nobody's going to know any of those names. Yeah, no. Lisa, think, how much free, think how much free time you'll have when you don't have to grind and watch all those games the rest of the year. It gives me more time to look. Hundreds of hours. You're, no, you're absolutely right. Actually, that is true. It gives me more time in the evening to look at the races because now – what, I don't have to pay attention to them the rest of the year. What's the over-under for wins for the Cubs? <laughs> I'd say, like, I, I actually tweeted that out. I think I put 15 and a half for the rest of the year, which is probably about right. I mean, they literally got rid of everybody. I was expecting it. Look, I look. I said, as long as we won a World Series we did in 2016, I'm all good. I'm actually all good. Rebuild time, that's fine. Gives me more time to look at our Tripto Pros and uh, focus on the races, gentlemen. Hey, Trip No Pros, uh, as usual, they uh, just have a phenomenal product that we mentioned last week as well. And uh, I heard you guys uh, have a struck a deal there where you're going to be uh, able to get Trip No Pros comments uh, at Del Mar. Is that correct? Kind of, kind of like a pseudo deal. So we were on their uh, site last year and we're doing it again this year. Um, so if you head to their site and look on the handicappers page, uh, you'll find a link there, and if you click on the link, you get a kind of a free team where we, we give away one race for the day. So it gives you an idea what the product is all about as well, how it flows, and, and how you might be able to incorporate that into your own handicapping. It's uh, just a, a wonderful tool to have. Uh, you can go to tripnotepros.com for all the uh, information there, and they have it uh, in English and, and many times in Spanish as well. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, a lot of us don't have time to look at every race. I don't know how you find the time to look through all the races, but uh, uh, wonderful, you do. <laughs> wonderful insight, wonderful insight, uh, especially since they're so limited in their comments uh, uh, in the racing form. They only got like two or three words they could possibly use, and it's tough to get a full idea of what actually happened in a race. Uh, and a lot of times the comments either don't have anything or what they have is uh, exaggerated and so forth. So it's just a great tool. And uh, many times it's come up with long shots as well, which Chappie, you love long shots. I sure do. I live and breathe by them. So uh, it's been a decent start to the meet. And uh, hopefully Benny has some long shots for today. I know I've got a few prices I like for tomorrow. So we'll, let's get the ball rolling, Georgie. All right, let's go. Let's start today. Let's uh, kick it off right off the bat with the first race. And in the first race, uh, you've got uh, uh, runners going a mile on the turf. A lot of them trying that distance for the first time. Uh, any uh, any ideas uh, in the uh, first race there, Chappy? You know, this is this is one of the few races I got a little bit of chance to look at. Um, the only horse I've come up with so far is the the nine horse uh, Queen of Pompeii, who absolutely had a horrible trip last time out. Uh, was blocked. Uh, it says checked early, and that is true. The jockey was standing up for half the race and actually ran on well. Goes two sprints to a route, so hasn't gone two turns yet. Um, but other than that, I haven't had too much time to uh, look at uh, the card. I know Benny has gone in depth into today's races. One of the uh, before we get to Benny, one of the uh, horses in there, one of the fillies that has a major chance 
is number one, Beautiful Temple. Beautiful Temple is one of, I think, four uh, runners that Tyler Bays is aboard. And certainly, uh, Beautiful Temple has a gigantic shot. Uh, this weekend, the entire weekend, uh, is uh, uh, PDJF Awareness Weekend, where uh, we're trying to bring attention to the uh, Permanent Disabled Jockeys Fund. And uh, Tyler, uh, let's see if uh, we're going to have Tyler Bays uh, join us right now, okay. and there he is, Tyler. Welcome to the show. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Tyler? There now. Now I can hear you. All right, <laughs> terrific. Uh, there's Tyler. He's got uh, one of those star wagons. Check it out. All right, I okay. love it. <laughs> Tyler, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the PDJF, obviously, a, a phenomenal organization. I've, you know, I was a jockey agent for seven years. Uh, been a fan of horse racing, you know, for 50 years and uh, a very, very dangerous profession that you have chosen to uh, to be a part of, Tyler. And this is an organization that certainly does well to help uh, jockeys uh, like yourself in their time of need if they have, have an accident and so forth. Well, at any time, you know, it's, it's the only sport there is that uh, ambulances follow us. Uh, every time we're out there, risk <laughs> right. our lives and... Uh, yeah, it's just the, the chance we take. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a thrill ride. So, it, you know, any donation always helps because somebody gets hurt. You know, PDJF always. Uh, well, you guys can go to pdjf.org uh, for more information on how you two uh, can, uh, you know, really help out. This is a good weekend to get in there and participate and. Uh, and uh, give it your best shot. Tyler Bates always gives it his best shot when he's riding. He's been one of my personal favorites for years and years. When I was a jockey agent, I was always amazed. Everybody's got their their positives. Uh, to me, Tyler Bates is one of the best jockeys I've ever seen getting a, a runner out of the gate. I mean, uh, uh, he does it consistently and consistently better than most jockeys I've ever seen. That is just a, uh, a, uh, a talent. Uh, Tyler, what is your secret to getting those runners out of the gate so uh, qu quickly? I can't tell our favorite <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, I, I had great teachers. Uh, my my uh, best teacher was Chance Rollins. The first agent I was a chief. He, uh, he made me go to the gate a lot uh, before I ever started riding. And just the guys in the gate. The chance for the after everything I learned, he had a big part of teaching me how to ride. Hey, uh, Tyler, from a gambling standpoint, this weekend, uh, do you have any horses uh, that you've worked in the morning or anything that uh, you might have some info on that we could make a few uh, dollars on or at least wager on? Well, I mean, you guys were talking about the horse in the first. I like her. I, I got a chance to know her the other morning and. She's strong, very strong, and uh, I'm expecting her to perform very well today. She, uh, I think she has a real good shot to win, and kind of counting on her to start my weekend off. I, I got some live horses, and you know, really looking forward to collusion or losing them all. That Mr. Glatt gave me a chance to ride, so uh, he's three for three on this racetrack, so he likes it here. He likes he likes Del Mar. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I have a good weekend. Certainly seems like in the uh, collusion illusion race, there's, there seems to be a, a lot a lot of speed in there as well, too. I think it should set up nicely for you, don't you? It does look like it's going to set up perfect, you know, and he's, he's a horse that seems to always draw the inside, and he, he's got a nice, comfortable post out there. So hopefully I can work out a good trip and have the horse under me to, to win. I, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm setting my goal on that right now. Yeah. One of, the, uh, one of the interesting factors in that race is collusion illusion – uh, along with, of course, the, the favorite, CZ Rocket. Uh, first time that they're not going to have Lasix, and that's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, what kind of a, of a reaction they will have to not uh, running with Lasix for the first time. Yeah, the one thing is these trainers, you know, when they work in the morning, they probably, that's kind of a test to see if, uh, if they can handle it or not, you know, and, and uh some horses handle it, some horses don't. Certainly collusion, illusion, uh, 
uh, the, the, the defending champion there. So there hopefully go. he could uh, repeat uh, once again. Well, like uh, you said, like you said too, Collusion Illusion is drawing the rail. I'm not looking at PPs now, but I think what probably I think three of the last five races is finally get drawn outside, and there seems to be plenty of gas. So uh, loving your chances in there, Tyler, especially like you said, undefeated at Del Mar. Yeah, yeah, it looks real good to me. I got one question for Tyler: What a hard worker he is. Like, I've heard that he just kind of outworks everybody, which is kind of my motto: just never get outworked. And, I, and I'm certain that it's true because I, I've got a lot of friends on the backside. How many horses do you work on average per day? And how many would you say the on average? average yeah. Probably average day is seven or eight. But down seven here, eight. since the first couple weeks this week, it was working nine, ten every day. It was, it was pretty tough. But, uh, you know, I, that's, that's the way I was taught. I the first day, he, uh, he made me work a thousand horses before he ever let me run. So. Wow. Right. So you just, uh, you don't work, you don't ride. You do very well. I could, I could confirm that because, uh, again, I was a jockey agent for seven years. So I was out there every morning. And there are jockeys that don't uh, work as hard. And Tyler was uh, just there every day working horses like crazy. Jeff Mullins, one of his main, you know, his main men, he was always there for Jeff. And, and just a, uh, 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 just constantly working great work ethic off the track as well i don't know if you guys know him but he's just wonderful tyler it's a pleasure to be a, a, around you uh and 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 again we, we want to thank you for being on the show you uh, before we let you go i got another runner that i think <clears throat> i think he's got a, a shot and he's a a bit of a long shot i think it's called shao mao or something like that what, is, Chow uh, Mart. Chow Mar, right. Chow I, Mar for uh, gary studi yeah she's she's a nice filly she's been dying to go on the route and uh, like every time so far she's run, I've something's happened either at the gate or leaving the gate, and uh, she's had a little bit of bad luck. So going the route, hopefully I can lay a little bit closer today, and uh, she's gonna come with her run. She's she's just been dying to go route, so I'm I'm expecting her to run big. Yeah, I think yeah, she'll she'll be probably a good price if uh, for the, us wagering on it, and I think Chow Mar. I think he's going to love that stretch out and then, you know, stumbled at the gate was why he has had some issues. So with a clean trip, hopefully you can get uh, that one and, and maybe pistachio for Georgie Parabon, my favorite dancing trainer. That guy can dance George Parabon, man. I tell you that right now. And, uh, and that horse really exploded out of nowhere. Where, where did that win come from last time? Who knows? I know, sometimes, man. Uh, dang. Sometimes they figure horses out and uh, they perform in the afternoon. You know, it's sometimes that light bulb goes on and they keep on winning too. Yeah, so hopefully that'd, that'll be the case. That'd be nice. Did that gallop out on Pistachio uh, Princess feel as good as it looked? She galloped out just like a pole in front of everybody else. You know, that day she was just full of herself, and he and George told me uh, before the race in the paddock, he says, "Man, she's ready to win today. Don't mess it up." <laughs> So she went out there and she went and she did. She galloped out great. And um, I'm expecting her to run hopefully as good today or better. You've ridden all over the place, Oakland, Kentucky, but this is your home base. I, I love to see you here. And for me personally, I am always rooting for you. It's easy to root for you. And whenever you win, it gives me a good feeling inside. There's some jockeys they win and I don't like them at all. Uh, but the but, uh, uh, this is your home base. This is, uh, you, I would think you love this place. Uh, you know, my family's here. So, uh, you know, they're not always at Del Mar, but they're going to come down for the races tomorrow. I just have a good feeling about Glatz Horse and uh, tell my wife and kids I want them here. And so I'm I'm really expecting, expecting to win that race. But, uh, yeah, Del Mar's great. You know, it's just uh, two months away from the kids is a little hard for me, but I get to go home every week and see them. So that's. That's a big plus. Everyone's excited to see me. Your your agent is Jack Carava. I've played many a poker game with him. Uh, he's got a good poker face. Uh, how has been working with uh, Jack Carava as your agent? Great. Uh, I was getting ready to come home from Kentucky last year, and he gave me a call and and uh, said he was going to give up training. And I said, "Oh man, that's too bad." He said, "Yeah, I'm going to try to find. I think I want to be a jock's agent." I said, "Well, you, you want a job?" <laughs> said yes, and, uh, we've been together since last September. He's great to work with, 
and uh, you know we get along good. You know I rode for him for twenty something years, and now I now he's working for me, or we're working together. So it's uh, it's been a good relationship. I I know you got stuff to do. Uh, any last questions, Chad? Before we let him go. No, uh, just you know appreciate your time and best of luck, and uh, certainly rooting for you tomorrow with the Collusion Illusion. I'm I'm a big fan of you and that horse, so uh, I'll be uh, wagering on you and. Best of luck, buddy. Thanks, guys. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tyler Bays, just want, great to have him on the show. And uh, all right, uh, that, that was great. Uh, beautiful Temple. Certainly he's got a big chance in the first race. Uh, but you mentioned uh, maybe a trip. No pros has some kind of a uh, comment on Queen of Pompeii because Chappie said had a rough trip last time. Is that correct? He's, he's absolutely right. Uh, she got knocked around a little bit at the start. I actually kind of quantified her early trouble as being pretty significant, like you know, upwards of four lengths. Um, I don't know if, if, if we have the note there or not, but, uh, yeah, there was no doubt that she was best. She's got some hidden speed, I think. She can clean up her mistakes at the start, and uh, she's got every bit of a, a huge swing in that first race. Also had a pretty interesting note on the, uh, the Andy Mathis Powers Princess. Um, it doesn't really show in the PPs, but broke bad and, and took on some throwback, which she absolutely hated. And she ran through it pretty well. Um, she probably gets her preferred surface today in turf, uh, given that she hated the, the dirt as much as she did. And, and I've always been a kind of a big fan of those firsters that, that get off the rail, especially Phillies first time out. So I give that one a big swing as well. I, I did speak with uh, uh, with Joe's agent, Mr. Mr. Matt Nakatani, about about her, and he thinks she may need a race. But um, I'm okay disagreeing with him on this one. I think she's got a big shot to win and uh, start number two. Yeah, I was hoping you I was hoping you got some info from him on the golf course the other day. Yeah, you know, I I, I, I try not to be that guy, but inevitably I end up being that guy anyway. And I, <laughs> It just flies out of me, and I start asking all kinds of questions. So, um, of course, you know, I had his number, and I shot him a text. I said, hey, I've got a good note on this, Philly. What do you think? And he was kind enough to give me a, a straight shot. Nice 12 to 1 there, Georgie, on that horse. Yeah, nice. Uh, that was fun to uh, to watch you playing golf there. You posted on uh, social media. It was fun to By see. Way, a quick trip note on that. Dave Weaver has the worst swing I've ever seen. I mean, he, he I, my, I was telling Benny the other day, my back, swing, my back swing when I putt is longer than Dave Weaver's back swing. He takes it back like a half a foot. I don't. That was embarrassing. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a DNA thing. I think he just, you know, he gets all jacked up and he just, it's testosterone. He wants to hit it, so he doesn't. There's no tempo involved, but he actually hits it pretty good. So it. His face mapping, you know, the, the, the ball is hitting the center of the club face pretty often, and he moves it around pretty pretty well. So he's uh, – we'll call, it, we'll call him BTL. He's better than looked on the golf course. Yeah, and, that's, and I was telling you, Scotty McKeever looks like he's uh, Jim Furyk's third cousin with that crazy loop in his swing. I mean, between those two, is that <laughs> – did, did you play against those two? If you lost, I'm embarrassed for you, Benny. No, no, it was it was Matt and I against them, but they got a ton of shots. I actually okay. started calling Dave Weaver Dot because every time I looked at my card, there was a dot next to the hole. He was getting a shot like every hole. It was hard to <laughs> okay. But we got the job done and, and uh, ended up even out. Uh, you know, we bought some drinks. Actually, you know what? I think Scotty, I think we owe Scotty for the drinks as well, but we did buy lunch. So. Well, hopefully Powers Princess can get the job done in the first at uh, 12 yeah. to 1 with a nice note for Benny. Yeah. If uh, if Charles Barkley joined you guys, it would be three <laughs> ugliest swings of all time. Yeah. He's actually improved a little bit, believe it or not. But still right, let's, move, let's move on to race number two in case we're playing a daily double. Uh, we got some uh, some uh, prices to play in the first. Uh, who do we like in the second there? Uh, uh, Ryan, I think uh, you like the second as well. Mute. You're muted, buddy. I had a really good note on the number two horse, uh, V Bucks. I basically said that there were a couple of things that, that were worth noting. Um, and the main thing was that this rider was very reserved before the far turn, and he took him back to last. And, 
and uh, I don't think that's the way this horse wanted to be wanted to be ridden. Uh, showed good speed out. Uh, the race two back showed a ton of speed. I think Pratt will correct that mistake uh, that, that Espinosa made in the last out. Uh, she'll be more forwardly placed, and that'll give her a big shot. I, Pratt always seems to take more money than he should, uh, but but I think V-Bucks is a little bit interesting in this spot. I also so, had a big note on the seven, to be honest. I thought I had a huge note on the seven. A bad, a bad start that doesn't show in the PPs. Um, the horse has some big upside, uh, showed some, some discomfort while running, and, and the jockey took note of that and just backed her out. So I expect a complete form reversal on Starship Defiant as well. 20 to 1 after two races where uh, that one lost by 20 lengths, she's going to be a good price. Chappie, is there a, uh, any improvement there from uh, uh, Espinosa, the uh, seven pound bug to Pratt? Is that a good move? Is that generally a good wagering uh, angle? I would say that would be a slight jock improvement if we had to uh, <laughs> quantify that. Uh, <laughs> like Benny said, the, the, the wagering public is going to shift that way, but well, they should. And, you know, Peter Miller and Pratt. But the one thing about Pratt we always talk about, he does get bet, but man, does he always seem to have his horses in the right place. Uh, the guy's a terrific rider, that's for sure. Uh, I, if, if it's possible, he, he's underrated. Yeah. Right, right. He, he I, does, I, I agree. He gets, I mean, he. don't get me wrong, he wins, you know, like 30% of his races out here, but – there's nothing he can't do that any other rider can do in the country. I challenge anybody to say, well, well, this guy's better and he does this. Well, what does he do? What does he do better? And a lot of those guys that are skilled, I can say, well, maybe I shouldn't. But I'm going to anyway because that's my MO. I just I have no filter. He's honest. The guy gives you an honest ride every time and you never have to worry about him. Uh, he's 110 percent every time, and frankly, he's just more skilled than everybody anyway. I uh, I, I saw some sort of a poll, a uh, national poll, uh, who's the top five jockeys, and remarkably, he wasn't on a lot of people's top five. So you're right; he's underrated, and uh, like you said, it's, it doesn't seem like a week doesn't go by that I don't get a text or some kind of an email or something going. Did you see the ride that Pratt put on this horse? Incre he's incredible, and he really is. He just finds. If the horse gets in trouble, he finds a way to settle him down and still get a run out of him. Always seems to be in a perfect position. Uh, you know, people trying to knock him. The other day he was on a favorite, and everybody uh, on TV was like, that horse can't possibly win. Mystic, uh, uh, the one that won yesterday. Uh, Mystic Pizza? Oh, no, that was the movie. Yeah, that was the movie. And, uh, and, and sure enough, Pratt got him into the winner's circle, you know, where everybody was saying, nah, no shot. So he's just, uh, he's remarkable and, and, well deserved that uh, he should take money on his runners there. Chappie, did you give a, a runner you like in the second? I, you know, I, w I was along with Benny. I, I didn't look a whole lot. I, li I like the two. I know it'll be a short price. And one thing Benny mentions a lot is you always outwork the room. And if you ever see anything on Pratt before the races, after the races, people are out about dinner. He's always at the gym, at the beach with his trainer working. Obviously, yeah. he's got a brilliant mind. But he's also got the uh, the work ethic. <clears throat> I think to go along with that to make him the best. And I, I believe Benny is correct. I, he's saw, the best right I now. saw him running on the beach with one of those parachutes on. He had a parachute and was running on the beach. The guy, he's uh, he takes his job seriously. And frankly, one more thing, he's just smarter than everybody. Correct. So we have the gift of like you know when you look from the pan shot, you, you see things much more clear. Like oh no, the pace. Backing up into him, there's a 30 to one shot and a 50 to one shot, and don't get stuck down in there. He moves three wide, you know, even though he's covered up, and you know, other jockeys would try and save ground, and you know, they don't know who's in front of him. But he always knows, he always makes a good decision, even in defeat. He had a ride the other day, he got beat on a big favor. People complained. The guy had amazing timing to slip through a hole that other guys wouldn't even have tried to get through, and he did it well. To, well making contact with no other horses, soft hands, yeah. finished. He got beat, but even in defeat, the guy was just – he was unreal. He, he, he lost got, to he lost to Brando the bartender uh, last week, but he made a mid-pack move that just left all the other jockeys stunned, went straight way to the lead and almost worked. I mean, he almost got a long shot home, but, you know, Brando was just too good. But uh, he just – no, he senses 
when, when the pace is weak and vice versa. He's just phenomenal. And I hear, Ryan, you're going to be phenomenal in race number five because uh, I hear you really uh, – this is like you love, love, love this race. Love is a very strong word. I, I, I try to not use it, but I do, I do love this Philly. Yeah. So this is one that, that – uh, it's, it's kind of everything I believe in. It's a trip note play. It's a hidden PP line play. Um, and I just think she fits really well in here. And that's number six, Mama Mocha. Um, I think a lot of people are going to overlook this one, at least – a lot of casual fans will. They'll look. They'll see Golden Gate. I'm hoping I can get a little bit of an overlay. But uh, you know, she ran against boys last time, and not only did she run against boys, she ran against opens. I need to yell at my dog. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> dog crash is going nuts. Somebody <laughs> ran the door bump. So yeah, she ran against boys. She ran against opens. She had no pace to run at. And she had a terrible turf trip. She she covered more ground than everybody. Uh, she came running late. My software loves her as well. It kind of agrees with, with what my eyes saw. Uh, I think Mama Mocha is as, as close to a free square as you'll ever get for a horse that, that will probably wow. be in the 7 to 2 or 4 to 1 range. I really like Mama Mocha. And that's a trainer that uh, has got poor percentages uh, working, operating mainly in Golden Gate. So certainly going to be overlooked by a lot of betters. A lot of betters are not jumping on Reina Gonzalez. Uh, but Kent DeSormo, Chappie, he's rejuvenated. He sure is. He's been riding very well and uh, kind of gone back to the glory days. And I don't have anything much else to add. When Ryan's like EF Hutton, when he talks and loves a horse, everybody listens. So I'm in on uh, Mama Mocha, and I believe what you are correct. There is no way this horse is going to go off the favorite, especially with uh, – Pratt jumping on or staying on Lena's big day, who's going to get obviously bet. And I think the, the two horse, uh, the Craig Lewis, the clubhouse ride trying turf for the first time, or excuse me, going long for the first time is going to get some play as well. So I think you're going to be at least third choice in there. So I'm all, I'm all over. I'm with you, Benny. Yeah, we're going to ride your coattails. A lot of people, they look, the, they look at the buyers, right? So the buyers, Oh, that's, it looks like an aberration, right? She threw up that 64 last time out. But when you, Look a little bit closer. Those are all two-year-old numbers. Uh, they're just they're they're not even comparable um, to the. She actually crossed the finish line at one point first and was DQ'd, and then and then ran another cracker right behind that after she moved up in class. So if she loses, um, you might see me with a cardboard sign on the front <laughs> trying trying to gain some money back. Big. One, uh, one of my favorite uh, movies is Shrek, and in race number seven we got Farquhar. And uh, that was uh, Prince Farquhar from Czech. Czech. Uh, mile and three eighths, a tricky distance. Um, let's go to Benny South Street for his opinion on race number seven. I like uh, I like that horse. Um, you know, she she had a uh, or he rather had a, a poor turf trip last time, and Kent is a little bit sneaky. I had him earlier in the meet on a horse that was a clear prep. I actually think this one was a prep as well. He rode this one with very quiet hands in the late stages, uh, trying to save a little bit for next time. Um, and even though I believe that today was the goal, uh, he competed well in, the, in that last race. He's drawn well, moves from the outside to the inside, uh, and, I, and I think he's one to, to pay attention to. He's on my radar for sure. Yeah, Farquhar certainly uh, looks good. Comes in actually with the best last race uh, thoroughgraph number, unless is Rejecca in? Does anybody know if uh, Rejecca made it off the AE or not? I do not know. I, I do not know, know as well. The only, so. the only other horse, Georgie, that I give a little bit of a look to, and I haven't you know, dove deeply into this, um, I was impressed two back with Love Love's uh, win coming from well off the pace. Beat a horse named Carmelita's Man, who I like tomorrow's finale, who's a hard knocker for Dean Peterson. And this horse beat that horse on the square with a big turn of foot. Last time out ran well the Bertrand, but that was on the dirt, throw a line through it. So I think Love Love is a little bit interesting with J.J. Hernandez at 6-1. to one. Uh, Rejecca is scratched out of that race, who so certainly would have taken some money. So Rejecca, one of the favorites, will be out. Race number eight culminates the day at about uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, 
at night, something like that, Eastern time. Uh, how do you like the eighth uh, there, Ryan? Well, I'm going to root for my buddies, uh, Ryan Hansen and Michelle Yu. Um, I, I give the uh, I give the two a little bit of a nod in here. Um, trips trips play for me. Had a bad start that doesn't show in the PPs. Had some other minor tr minor trouble. It was definitely a better than look performance. Um, gets a huge rider upgrade that we talked about at nauseum and, and Pratt. Um, have nothing bad to say about Big Well. And I'm a little biased, right? So those are my buddies, and, and I always want them to do well. So I'll be uh, I'll be investing and screaming later today on, on this one. I do I do like a, a runner in that race as well. I mean, obviously Ellingsworth to Pratt, another one of those incredible jockey upgrade angles. But uh, here's a, a, a jockey that I think uh, has really been showing his stuff, and that is uh, Kyle Frey on number seven, Poseidon Wrath. I really am putting a you know I'm putting a line through that race. That's the one I'm going to be betting. I think he uh, he really fits this race on third graph numbers. He's got. Uh, the first two races, you know, the one at Keelan and the one here, some of the best. And then last time, it was a runaway winner, won by a dozen lengths. I think they just gave up there. Mark Glatt's going to have this one ready. Drops precipitously from 75K to 20K. And Kyle Frey has absolutely been impressing me personally, Chappie. Uh, he's looked good, hasn't he? Very good, yeah. I think the rumors are right. He's uh, intending to stay in Southern California now, from what I've been hearing. Have you heard anything about that, Benny? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, but, you know, if I think about staying, too, if I were four for 19. Yeah. yeah. yeah More money to be made out here. So He's doing good. There's money to be made on Saturday as well. So let's dive in. We've, uh, we're have we we're short on time, about 10 minutes. So let's maybe go over uh, three or four races. In race number seven, it's a five furlong on the turf. Uh, Chappie, I think Alice Marble is going to be uh, the favorite there. Is she the deserving favorite? Yeah, I think she's the deserving favorite. Um, you know, the, the one thing you don't know of is back to the turf, but the the, the dirt wins were very impressive. Uh, watch the replay of the last race. Pratt's obviously going to have this horse in a good spot as tactical speed. You know, L Lava Lane was very impressive, although I don't know exactly what she beat to back on the turf, but she won by five and change. And, uh, Drew off very nicely, and uh, I think those are kind of the two horses to beat. I, I don't know if Fireproof got in on the outside. That's a horse coming off of a long layoff. Um, I think it's a little bit chalky maybe to start, but there's certainly some prices to come in the later races. Benny, did you get a chance to look at that race at all? Um, I, I would say I'm probably with you. I will say Alice Marble did run down a loose leader last time on a speed favoring track, so that one was an upgrade for me. And what do you what do you call uh, D'Amato, Georgie, the Sultan of Sod? Sultan of Sod. He's got two live horses in there with the two best turf jockeys, so it'll be tough to find your way around those. Yeah. Did you guys, did you guys get a chance to see R Rispoli on feathers yesterday? Or no? The ride yeah, he did. He feathers. broke my heart. He broke your heart? He yeah, because I didn't I didn't have feathers. Oh. So <laughs> Oh, was that the, the horse that the, 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 had the, the uh, inquiry against it? Inquiry no. against, yeah. 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 He, that was aggressive ride. Man, he is a badass. I mean, That's he got part. just amazing. He just – and then you, I saw him. I don't know what he said to the stewards, but he was over there. You know, he was moving his hands like Italians have a tendency to do when he's talking to the stewards, and they left him up. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I – I, I, I kind of tend to disagree with that. And I, I know it didn't cost somebody a placing. I think that's just the rules of California, right? You have to cost somebody a placing. It place. is. It's a bad rule. Yeah, I mean, it just becomes dangerous, right? You're giving guys a free pass to just start bullying people out of the way when there's no room to be had. I mean, what's the sense of, of hem hemming anybody in if someone's just going to shove you out of the way or knock you out of the way? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I have a little bit different. Yeah, shove is a light word on that one, in my opinion. But yeah, uh, I think I have uh, no not, money on the race either. Gutierrez said, uh, "If that's not a foul, I don't know what is." He, he said that. I agree with him. I agree. Yeah, with yeah and, and they just they just took down Drayden for doing the exact same thing on Saturday the, the week prior. So a little bit of inconsistency, uh, in my opinion, from the stewards. 
Uh, let's go to the last three races on Saturday. Uh, start with the ninth, a very salty bunch. Uh, these guys are going a mile and an eighth, and you got some uh, some really good runners in here, including a, a an unknown from the Marcelo Polanco barn that actually got a four on a thoroughbred number. They got a uh, they had a number on this uh, horse over there in Argentina. A four is a fast fast thoroughbred number. But uh, Rip City, I know uh, Pipey and Little Red Feather, they win a lot of races together. Chappie, how did you see the night to start the pick three? I'm going to give you three, two or three prices that I think. This race, and I need to dig deeper, but I've watched plenty of the replays. I think um, I think there's some prices in there here that have a shot. Uh, I think I've always been a fan of KP All Systems Go, the rail horse. I don't know if this horse will need the race, but obviously running against better. Very, very deep closer, but this horse has talent. I like to see that uh, Umberto jumps on at 6-1. to one. I think this horse is worth the use. Um, a very interesting horse in here is the 10 horse, Forever Poe, 15-1 <coughs> with Mike Smith. If you go way back to the January 25th race, in tw uh, uh, excuse me, January 25th, the tw of 2020 this horse showed a terrific turn of foot to blow by media blitz now obviously there's been some things wrong with this horse with all the, the, the lines in between so something went wrong there didn't run till august at saratoga something went wrong and get wrong again it showed up back in february at turfway park and then last time out ran on the slot, but actually puts two together. Mike Smith shows up. I like the – now, I'm, I'm going back a ways, but there's some talent here, and I think at 15-1 to 1 is worth using. And the other horse I want to uh, talk about a little bit is the 11 get her number at 8-1 to 1 for Peter Miller. Go back to the initial two races, sh showed some serious talent on the turf at Del Mar, gets a freshening. We know this horse got on the derby trail, and uh, – Florent Giroux comes out to ride in, you know, in other races, but shows up for, here for Peter Miller. I think all three of those are worth use, using that horse eight to one in the morning line. Anything to add there, Ryan? Uh, how can you add to that? That covered every <laughs> horse. Hey, no, real quick though. Did, did you <laughs> three, say three, three horses? I'm three just horses. kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So did you say that, that the Polanco horse ran a four on the sheets? Uh, uh, they only had one number, and it, it was the uh, the race on uh, January 18th where uh, this one won and uh, ran a four on, on that day. I'm with you. I've got a great angle with shippers. If the thoroughbred sheets numbers ever show strong numbers when they ship, they're automatic uses because they're usually much, much higher. So if, if that number is competitive and that sounds like that it is, um, I'm in. I, I do agree with Chappie a little bit on the one. It just depends on if this horse is fit or not. Who knows? Um, but, you know, it was running against some really salty horses in there. Hit the road, smooth like straight. Um, you know, those are some, you know, grade one winners. So speaking of grade one, we got the grade one Bing Crosby on Saturday. And uh, one of our favorites uh, is uh, CC Rocket. CC Rocket is actually just a rocket, just like uh, his name says. Uh, Florent Giroux, this is obviously why he's in town to ride this one. Uh, first time, no Lasix. Is that going to be a factor, Chappie? You know, I don't think so. Um, clearly the horse to beat. There's plenty of speed. Should set up for a horse from off the pace, which is exactly what CC Rocket likes to do i mean that's uh, absolute inclusion um a couple other horses that i thought were interesting is tyler bays's collusion illusion which you know pratt does leave to go on dr shibble obviously he had his choice there collusion illusion like we said has been drawn the inside finally goes outside and is three for three at del mar and once again with the speed should set up for a horse off the pace the other horse I just I, I'm just intrigued by. And I'd love to know Ryan's thoughts here. Is the two vertical threat? I know has a lot of talent. If you go back to that race that it actually won at Del Mar last year, the horse relaxed uh, very nicely and sat off the pace. And this is not a speed happy horse, but the horse has a lot of talent. And at eight to one, 
Baltus and it seems like whatever slam dunk throws out there, they've got runners. I think this horse is very interesting at a price. Yeah, I'm going to take a wait and see approach for this race. I've got about four or five that are interesting. I do think the race goes through CZ Rocket. Um, I mean, if you look at his running line, the only horses he's getting beat by are, are like absolute monsters. I mean, Whitmore, like, yeah. Yeah, he's made like four and a half million dollars. He's beat Whitmore a couple times. Yeah. Uh, you know, he got beat routing at Lone Star, which I was there that weekend. That track was an absolute joke of a track. I mean, it was like, it was like Caddyshack. I mean, yeah, sure. I remember so, like, watching you in that storm. It was yeah, hilarious. Yeah. yeah was going to make a video with me and Umbrella flying <laughs> off over the track. <laughs> Didn't get to that. But, yeah, no, I think I think the track bias is going to come into play here a little bit. Your horse is interesting, Chappie, but the, the, the track has been a little outside. At least it was earlier in the meet. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what uh, how the how the track's playing headed into this race. Um, I think it's, to be honest with you, I think it's somewhat of a weak race for a grade one. So... Uh, I think class is going to be king in here, and then collusion, illusion, and CZ Rock are the logicals. My, my top pick is actually, uh, we didn't talk about this beforehand, but my top pick in that race, and one of the ones that I hope will do well for me on Saturday, is number two, Vertical Threat. I think Vertical Threats uh, is really uh, a quality runner. Uh, Baltus goes to Bravo, who uh, he won a couple yesterday and put him over the, uh, he's now won 5,501 races, so... A big milestone for him, 5,500 wins. And uh, Jersey Joe Bravo, I think he's got a new nickname now. Uh, but uh, he is fitting in great. He used to ride here, but uh, he's he's come out here and and he, he hasn't lost a beat. He's, he's riding great. I think this one is ultra fit, ran great in the uh, uh, in his last race, in that same Valley race, the $200,000 race, has a win over Del Mar and the Smiling Tiger. I think that, uh, you know, a youth must be served, and I think that this uh, four-year-old has got a big shot here in a very, very big race. The get-out race is number uh, race number 11. Uh, Chappy, uh, if we were in deep trouble, who's going to get us out of uh, danger? All right, it's not going to be a big price, but I'm a fan of this horse. Um, there's plenty, plenty of speed in this race, and uh, I'm leaning towards the two who I had mentioned earlier, Carmelita's man, you go back and watch some of the replays lost to love love the last time not a big excuse there but a couple times this horse has a giant turn of foot late go back and watch the january 23rd race tyler bays was up on this horse had nowhere to run till about the last 10 yards if george remembers up in the office i was screaming my lungs out because i thought he was going to get beat and got through <laughs> late and somehow exploded down on the rail and this horse likes to fight this horse likes a fight and will he, he likes to put his head down and battle at the wire. And uh, two of three in the money at Del Mar. I'm going to have some shekels on Carmelita's man at four to one to close out the <laughs> card tomorrow. That sounds good. Uh, how about you, uh, Ryan? You know, I, I'm, I'm just getting to this. I, I'm not this deep yet, but I will say this. It, a lot of times these horses, they put them on turf and they just win. They're hard to get around. U.S. Dangers three for three on turf, um, and and Wong took this horse from from Papa Padromo. Probably looks like a private purchase. Immediately sent him long on turf, and the horse has won by open lengths in all three races, and actually did beat Opens in all three of those races as well. Even though one of them was a maiden claimer, so right. that one looks a little bit interesting to me. Um, and any horse that comes off such a significant layoff as Trevor T is coming off of and comes back back protected. Always gets my eye a little bit. So he's worth he's worth a look as well. But but I, uh, when I've noticed this when Chappie says the word shekels, you have to get involved. So <laughs> so that's a, that will be an absolute use for me because I think I've heard him say that <clears throat> excuse me about three or four times now and every time the horse they haven't always won, but the horses. <laughs> At least they come running. <laughs> they come running. So right, uh, if you if you go to Trip No Pros, you're gonna get your shekels worth. I'll tell you that right now. That's right. Uh, that. Ryan, talk to us about uh, Trip No Pros before we say goodbye. Yeah, head to the website. Go to DMTC.com. Head to the handicapper section. Get in there. Check out the product. Uh, click around. You can see how it works. 
focusing in on several things that don't show up in the PP lines, those being uh, horse comfort and jockey intent, as well as trouble lines that don't show up. And heck, even sometimes the clock is wrong. I told Dave Weaver the other day, we had a note on a Del Mar horse and he said, oh, these buyers are terrible. I said, well, guess what? The clock was wrong. I hand timed it myself. It was a second off. The buyer should be 12 points higher. And sure enough, the horse won by open lane. So uh, put in the time, I'm going to go drink a couple Red Bulls and uh, settle in for the rest of my notes uh, for tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, he watches all the replays. He hand times races. Uh, he plays golf. Uh, he, when does this guy sleep, Chappie? I have no idea. But I, I, I do have to say that uh, I'm, I'm not joking you. I think. The Tripno Pros are the best tool I've used of anything. I like to look at replays myself. Um, then I will check Ryan's notes and see what I've missed, what I haven't, go back. But many a time, he does so much work that unless you never sleep or you have a coffee drip, you can't get to. So I go to what he says, and if I get a chance, then I'll watch it. If not, I go by what he says because it's uh, it's invaluable tool to use. So. All I can say is go to Trip Up Pros, get them, use them tomorrow, and the key word is shekels. <laughs> so right, I'm going right. to have to use that for a, uh, a coupon code. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I say use them today. Get in there today. Uh, Absolutely. Thank, you, thank you all for being on the show. We'll be back next week, uh, Friday at 1 o'clock, and uh, hopefully you guys will have a great uh, weekend at uh, San Diego. Don't forget to uh, go to pdjf.org as this is a PDJF Awareness Weekend and it certainly is a, a, a wonderful organization. Everybody have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Good luck.